Hey, hey everybody, my name is Ryan. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Today I wanna to address a question that I got from one of you. How do I encourage vocalists and musicians to increase in their skill level? First things first, there's a really important precedence in regards to practice. See, practice does not make perfect, practice makes permanent. It's less about if you practice and more about how you practice. Practicing something wrong for eight hours straight is only going to ensure that you're going to play it completely wrong. But practicing intentionally and with purpose for 15 minutes can make a world of difference. So one of the things that we do to set up our teams is that we create a Dropbox folder every single week with next Sunday's set list in it. We set up the folder on Thursday, which is 10 days before the Sunday that the set is going to be played. It's 10 days before the Sunday that it's gonna be played, which means it's four days before we even have a rehearsal. And so this gives our teammates the opportunity to take a listen and take a look at all of the songs. We send them all the chord sheets, all of the audio files, and so all the team members have four days to familiarize themselves with the songs, take a look at any problematic sections, and get ready for our rehearsal on Monday. And because we do this for all of our vocalists and musicians, we can expect them to show up prepared. Because we do our part as leaders to resource and equip our team members, then we can also raise the level of expectation. We expect them to show up prepared for every single rehearsal. When we rehearse, it's less about personal practice and more about group rehearsal. And so what we tell people is practice at home. And I know most of us don't like this word, but the truth is we gotta do it as musicians. So practice. Let me give you some interesting tips and some interesting feedback in regards to practice. And this is practice according to science. A group of researchers got together to try to figure out what makes a practice session most productive. And this is what they came up with. First of all, sounds a little obvious, focus on the task at hand. Turn off your digital devices, eliminate distractions, get focused, no excuses. Number two, start out slowly or in slow motion. See, coordination is built on repetition. And if you start out slowly practicing things correctly, you can gradually speed them up and continue to practice them correctly. Number three, frequent repetition with scheduled breaks. This is actually a habit of elite performers. So do what the pros do. Split your practice time into small, concentrated, very intentional chunks of time. For more information on this, just do an internet search for interleaving versus blocking for musicians. And the last one is practice in your brain in vivid detail. Visualization is used in sports, it's used in creative exercises, it is used in stress management, it's used in problem solving. Visualize yourself playing through the music without actually playing through the music. Put yourself through the music note by note. Visualize what it feels like to take that breath, to press that key, to play that note. So that's what science says, but let me get a little bit practical. So how can you hack your practice session? Step one, it's really important to have a goal in mind for each practice session. So for me personally, before I practice, I ask myself, why am I practicing? See, clarity is the key to efficient and effective practicing. So every time you sit down at a keyboard or pick up a guitar or grab a pair of drumsticks, Ask yourself, why am I practicing? What am I here to accomplish? And it's important to be as specific as possible. So here's a list of potential reasons why you might be practicing. Maybe you're working on a specific technique or maybe you're working on a specific piece of music. Are you trying to explore a particular style of music or maybe you're just working on speed? Maybe it's time to work on endurance or maybe you're trying to isolate your appendages, one appendage, two appendage, all four appendages. Most of us probably need to work on our sight reading or maybe you're prepping a piece for a particular performance. Are you sitting down today to work on your showmanship or maybe you're just playing music to relax and have fun? But you gotta remember that just playing through your music isn't the same thing as practicing. So start with the end in mind. What do I want to accomplish today? By having a goal in mind before you start practicing, you'll find that you will progress and grow as a musician much more rapidly. And let's be honest, when we improve at things, there's a sense of accomplishment as we get closer and closer to reaching our goal. But it's also important to remember that it is okay to have a practice session where you're just there to jam to relax, to have fun with music. When I sit down and play some of my favorite songs, it can be one of the most stress relieving things that I do and I actually can have a ton of fun doing it. Be sure to identify why you are practicing. This will help you stay focused, make your practice time a bit more efficient and hopefully more productive and more than anything, 
hopefully more enjoyable. Step two, get prepared. Before you enter into your practice session, make sure that you gather all of the materials that you need to practice effectively. This will probably include grabbing your instrument, a pair of drumsticks, a journal, a metronome, something to write with, maybe even a snack or a bottle of water, a music playing device, headphones, Bluetooth speaker, your music. The materials that you need for your practice session actually depend on your answer to step one, why am I practicing? Getting ready for a practice session might include using the bathroom getting a drink, grabbing something to snack on. Being prepared will save you a lot of time and will save you a lot of unwelcome interruptions. When I sit down for a practice session, I try to make sure that I'm as prepared as possible so I don't have to leave that practice session until I have achieved my goals for that session. Create an atmosphere, get the right setup for you. Maybe you would prefer a very quiet, very concentrated place, or maybe you like where there's more commotion and more background noise. Find the right setting that works for you. But try to be consistent with what you choose because what this will do is it'll train your mind to focus every time you enter into that particular atmosphere. But again, try to make sure that your environment is as productive as possible by eliminating as many distractions as possible. Step three, get warmed up. And this is a step that a lot of people like to skip over. Start each practice session with some simple exercises, breathing warm-ups, stretches. Work through enunciation exercises or scales or rhythm patterns. Start out at a slow pace and gradually work up to a faster pace over a couple of minutes. Warming up can prepare you mentally and physically and believe it or not, can actually help prevent injury. And just like a physical workout, a warm up is important. Be sure not to plow through the exact same warm up every single time because then your mind can just turn off and you don't engage with what you're doing. But Break it up, make it different. A warm up is not simply just to get your muscles moving, but a warm up is also to get your mind engaged in what you're going to do. And this is an opportunity to prepare your body and your mind for work. So take note of how you're feeling. How are you breathing? Is there tension in your body? Why are you doing that particular exercise? And if you don't think warming up is necessary, do an experiment for me. Practice every single day for an entire week. Dive straight into what you're working on. And then at the end of that session, pull out a journal and write down what went well, what didn't go so well, and how you felt about it. Take note of what you worked on and whether or not it was easy to get through or to accomplish the goal that you set. And then do the same thing a week later, but this time, do a proper warm up beforehand. And then when you're done, get right into what you're working on. When you're done with your practice session, do the same thing. Write in your journal, how did you feel? What went well? What was easy? How did the session go today? After all that, let me know what works for you. Warming up, not warming up, I'm just curious. Step four, practice with focus. And this is critical. The truth is if you've done the other steps up to this point, then getting focused and getting in on what you're supposed to be doing shouldn't be too hard. Focus your efforts that every single exercise or every single piece that you play today goes back to your original goal that you set for this practice session. And this is where you need to be thorough. Slow pieces and parts down to where you can play them successfully correctly. This is an opportunity to slow things down and make sure that you're mastering the exercise or mastering the technique required. Glossing over something and saying, close enough, that is a terrible, terrible practice strategy. Remember, practice does not make perfect, practice makes permanent. When you're practicing, you might, and honestly, you probably should sometimes sound really terrible because you're playing things beyond your skill level. In fact, you should be playing things that are too difficult for you. It's really easy to fall into the trap of just playing and practicing things that we already know how to do. I've had those piano students. They show up week after week after week, and they say, sorry, I haven't practiced this week, but guess what? I brought something I can play for you. And then they proceed to pull out a piece of music that they played five years ago and mastered, or honestly, never actually ever mastered, and they play it start to finish because it makes them feel good. I can also promise you that those piano students never went any further. If you've got those students, drop them like a hot potato because honestly, they're not ready to grow. Practicing through songs that you've played before, honestly, can make you feel pretty good about yourself, but it will not help you improve as a musician. Time spent practicing something that you already know is actually time wasted. Make sure you're continually pushing yourself to learn something new and grow as a musician. That's why you got into this in the first place. Step five, write it down. After you finish your practice session, write down and reflect on how that session went. Write down what you worked on. Write down how much time you spent doing it and reflect on whether or not you met the goals that you set for yourself. And I would also include uh, metronome markings. What speed have you gotten something up to or even general feelings of this particular section. Keeping a practice journal can really help you stay on track. And honestly, 
At some point in time, it can really give you a sense of accomplishment when you look back and see how far you've come. For instance, you might notice that a particular passage you played two months ago, you could only hit it at 75 BPM, but today you nailed it effortlessly at 110 BPM. Success and accomplishment can be huge motivators in getting us back into the practice room. And step six, rinse and repeat. Make practice a part of your regular routine. It's impossible and dangerous to try to build without a foundation. And that's what practice does for musicians is we work on basic skills that can lead us to build something awesome. And regular practice also has a lot of physical benefits. Scientifically, musicians are looked at as athletes because of their very fine, repetitious, fine motor movements. We have over 30 different muscles in our hands alone. They need to be worked precisely and efficiently and repetitively if we want them to do what our brain is telling them to do. We cannot learn without repetition. And for this very reason, it's beneficial to practice little and often, even if it's just for a few minutes rather than leave long gaps of time between practice sessions. That's it for today. I am finished purposefully pounding in the idea of practice. I'm Ryan King. Thanks again for joining me today. If you've got a burning question that you'd like me to address, please don't hesitate to ask. Please subscribe, like, comment, or share, and I will see you next time.